today I'm here with a review of The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. I just finished this last night so it's all very fresh in my mind and I really wanted to talk about it and kind of work out my thoughts and feelings. I think I've settled on a star rating but I need to just talk it out and see how that affects my overall review. This review won't have any spoilers and as always I will give you a brief description of the book, non-spoilery, and then we'll get into my thoughts and feelings afterwards. The Justice of Kings. This is about a guy called Sir Conrad von Volt. From the synopsis on the back of the book I thought we would be following him maybe in third person but actually we have a female narrator called Helena who is kind of telling her story and most of her story seems to revolve around this guy that she is with. So von Volt is a a justice to the Emperor which basically means he goes around and makes sure the Emperor's laws are being followed and makes judgments if they're not. He has a lot of power and he also has some like special magical powers as well one being the Emperor's voice which means he can command people it's kind of like the voice in Dune if you're familiar with that and he also has powers of necromancy. There are a few other magical elements that show up in this book but those are the two main ones. He also has a guy helping him called Bressinger who is one of my favourite characters I'll talk about him later. We're following these three people as they're kind of doing a tour of the Empire, kind of sounding out some towns, seeing what's going on, seeing if anyone needs help as well. And they do come across a town which needs help. They end up in a place called Gales Vale or something. Let me just double check that. Galen's Vale. There's a whole map here to help me out, which is good because I need it. They end up here and they find that a woman called Lady Bower has been murdered. They want to look into it, obviously. So as their investigation sort of gets a bit deeper, they find that Lord Bower is acting a little bit weird. So basically they do some talking around town, find out some more things to investigate and to look into. Meanwhile, there's stuff happening outside of this town as well with what is essentially a group of religious people. I don't really know the correct term, I'm really showing my ignorance here, but there are some people who worship a certain god, they are not following the Emperor's rules at all, so they're slowly creating a little bit of havoc in the background and we find out more about them later on in the book. On to my thoughts and feelings, which may be messy because like I said I'm still working through what I actually think of this book. At the beginning, I will say, I thought that this had a five star feeling, I'm not sure it does anymore. I started off reading this alongside listening to the audiobook and the audiobook narrator is chef's kiss like she's absolutely incredible i think just because of her i've added a whole extra star to this book because she does voices she has added little bits and pieces to the book as well because like i said i was tandem reading and she added tiny words or expressions to i guess express what the characters were saying better in audio format and i absolutely loved that she didn't change any of the plot or the sentence structure or anything it was just when she was doing the dialogue mainly and there's one point where helena like i said she's like writing out her story helena addresses the reader and the narrator changed that to listener and I thought that was a really nice little touch. If you can, or if you would like to, I would highly recommend listening to this on audio, maybe with the book alongside so you can see all of the place names and stuff because it does get a bit confusing because the audiobook is absolutely incredible. So because of that, I spent the first 100 pages thinking this could be a five star read. I really enjoyed the beginning because it really drops you in and it shows you how dark this book is going to get. It starts off with th introducing three main characters, of course. This is where you learn that it's actually told in first person from Helena's point of view instead of Von Volt's, which is a stupid name, by the way. <laughs> I, I was laughing every time the narrator said his name. Anyway, let's just call him Sir Conrad. Introduces Conrad and Helena and Bressinger as they come across what is essentially a group of pagans who are practicing a religion which has been outlawed. So Sir Conrad gives them a chance to repent and basically switch religions and sign a document and be like, I'm not going to do this paganism stuff anymore. Which is really nice. You see that he can be a nice person. It all goes to crap because <laughs> some people are not too happy that Sir Conrad kept these people alive. And then immediately after that, you get into the whole murder mystery business. And so this book turns into a bit of a mystery thriller book, but also fantasy. I did get a little bit confused in the beginning with all of the place names. There are a lot of them because this book is clearly, or this world is clearly based on the Holy Roman Empire or fantasy Europe and potentially the Middle East. So you've got places which are clearly based on like France, Germany, Spain has like disappeared <laughs> from this map but then you sort of go into Eastern Europe and then you've got the Middle East down here which kind of it's called the Jade Sea so I assume it's going into like Eastern Asia which I found really interesting but I did find all of the different place names and the history of this world and how each country or kingdom got brought into the empire. There's a lot of talk on that. It didn't necessarily feel info dumpy, it actually felt more like the author was assuming that you already knew this history, which was an interesting way of writing it. He didn't spend too much time sort of trying to educate the reader, just hoped that you would 
kind of get the hang of it and I did it just took me a while so I really enjoyed the world building and I find the whole concept of the justices with their emperor's voice and stuff really interesting and the fact that they can also learn new powers I'm intrigued to see where all of that goes I think it was a really good setup the mystery itself was also really interesting I had some theories but I didn't spend too much time sort of digging in like I would with a thriller book because I was really interested in the character work and the magical stuff even though the magical stuff in this book isn't too present for most of it I guess I was more interested in like the world building side so all of that is excellent and then we get to Helena who is the surprise narrator I have very conflicting feelings I'm gonna say it and I might get shouted at I don't think Richard Swan writes good female characters I'm sorry I think it was awful he did terribly let's start with the basics and then we'll get into Helena proper there are I think four or five female characters in this book among like dozens of men. You've got Helena, who is obviously the main character. You have Lady Bower, who is dead. You have a woman who is barely present for most of the book. She gets like a couple of scenes and then that is it. You get a woman who is not necessarily the nicest. And then you get another woman who does not have the best ending. And that's all I can say really without spoilers. So I don't really want to go into loads of detail. I might write a little spoilery section on Goodreads or something. So that's all I can say about the side characters and the overall way that Richard Swan wrote about them. I don't think he handled it very well. This wouldn't be passing any like tests all of the female characters were there kind of to prop up the men or they were dead. I really didn't like that and it really affected my enjoyment of the book. After I put it down I was sort of lying in bed thinking what the hell was that? On to Helena proper. What the fuck? <laughs> so I have a few problems with how he portrayed Helena here and I am reserving a lot of judgment because this is obviously following a Helena at the beginning of her journey. She is only 19 in this book and to be fair she may have a lot of character growth to go. The author may have been writing her the way that he did to show how young she was. I don't necessarily agree with it, but maybe that's his tactic. And then later on, she will improve and mature as a person. In this book, Helena comes across as very, very young. And I do question that because she grew up kind of on the streets and having to fend for herself. She's basically an orphan for most of her life. And I'm not saying you can't be sort of immature if you're an orphan and growing up on the streets, but I would expect her to be a bit more streetwise, I guess, and to pay a bit more attention to things. There's also the fact that she spent most of the book crying and I'm not against female characters crying. I cry over pretty much everything, but every single scene where something big was happening or even not, she was sobbing and that was the only sort of emotion that she showed was sobbing and fear and I'm not about that. I don't, I didn't love it. I feel like if Richard Swan wanted to do that in some scenes it would have been fine and it would have had a bigger impact if he had withheld that and saved it for some like really dramatic scenes. But instead she cried all the freaking time. Every single chapter she was in when something was happening she was like I really wanted to cry. I almost burst into tears or I sobbed, I wept. It's kind of like really? You're in all of these situations, you've seen what Sir Conrad has been doing all of this time and you've been living on the streets by yourself for years before he picked you up. Why are you sobbing over every single thing? And again, I don't know if this is Richard Swan showing how young she is and how inexperienced and then later on she's going to stop crying so much, I bloody hope so. But it just felt like that was the only way he knew how to write a young female character who didn't have the same experiences as the men that she was with, which is a shame because it didn't really feel like her character was very nuanced or developed very well in this first book. And considering he particularly wanted to write her story, I imagine well, that's why he chose her, I thought he could have done better. Another reason, <laughs> I'm not a massive fan of Helena is because she did some really stupid things and I can forgive this to be fair because again she's very young she's only 19 and if I'm doing my first like mission or intense murder mystery mission then I would probably also fuck up and I'm in my 30s so that's fine but combined with the crying stuff I was just a bit like hmm maybe not and then the third thing is that there is a sex scene between her and her insta lovey guy who she's already talking about marrying like two days in. They both had sex for what they both say is their first time. Helena said there's a little bit of pain and then mostly pleasure and I'm really sick of male authors writing about a woman's first time in that way. It's not necessarily the case and it seems to be the go-to. And then she goes on to say that they have sex once and then they keep going all night again and again and again. It's like really if it's both of your first time I don't think you're doing this all night. I don't think you're going multiple times. That's one of those moments where you can tell that a male author is writing a female character and it really pulled me out of the story. I literally had to put the book down and go and tell my husband what was going on because I was so frustrated. So all of that combined made Helena a really frustrating character for me to read and not just frustrating but disappointing. I thought she was going to be a surprise sort of light, I suppose, gem in this book because I wasn't expecting it to be told from her point of view at all. 
So I am really disappointed in the way that she was portrayed and I just hope that it's because he's trying to write a younger female character and we'll see her mature and we'll see all of her character growth and stuff and it'll really develop over the course of the series. I'm not sure it will, but fingers crossed. I really hope so. All that to say, I did really enjoy this book and I am going to give it four stars. I would have probably given it three if it weren't for the narrator of the audiobook because she was incredible and I now stan her. But I had to knock a star off because of Helena and I am really disappointed by that. I just hope that she is better or the author portrays her better in the second book. I wouldn't really say this book is high action. There's obviously like a battle in there at some point. I say obviously, it might not be obvious. There's like a big event that happens that it's been building up to which was enjoyable to read about but the main character was sort of hidden for most of it so you didn't really see it so I wouldn't say it's like a high action book I think it's leaning more into the political side because the author actually used to be a lawyer or still is maybe so there, this focuses a lot on like justice and rules and law and stuff which I actually really liked so overall this is a good book I wouldn't not recommend it I would just go into it with realistic expectations knowing that maybe Helena isn't the best written character because she is one of those female characters who is clearly written by a man and it takes you out of the story. I am definitely going to read the second book. I've actually already gone and picked it up from Waterstone, so I'm going to start that soon, probably in February. I'm actually really excited, despite what I've been saying about this one. I am looking forward to it. Thank you so much for watching my review. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'm trying to post more review videos this year, over 23 of them to be exact, and this is only my second one so far. So please help encourage me to do more. Let me know if you've read this book and what your thoughts are down below. Please don't spoil it because this is a spoiler-free review. I'll speak to you on my next video. Bye!